Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and we start this is the third video on the specimen for paper 4 which is now we're going to discuss the last three questions which were left so we will start doing that we start uh, looking at uh, question number 8 uh, which is during a sporting event an athlete carries out aerobic respiration structures and compounds involved in aerobic respiration are listed 1 to 10 remember they're talking only about aerobic respiration now you would think sporting and then you quickly think anaerobic. No, no, no. Well, they're not asking you that. Structures and compounds involved in aerobic are listed 1 to 10. Coenzyme A, cytoplasm, pyruvate, NAD, carrier protein in a mitochondrial membrane, intermembrane space, ADP, acetyl group. Complete table 8.1 by matching each description with one number chosen from 1 to 10 to show the correct structure or compound. You may use each number once, more than once or not at all. So location of ATP synthase was what? It was 7. What is 7? Seven? 7 was inner mitochondrial membrane. Right? Then transports hydrogen atoms. You could have written 4. Why 4? NAD carries the hydrogen atoms. Nucleotides with a purine base. You could have said 9 or you could have said 4. Nucleotide with a purine base. So NAD and so you could have said NAD or ADP. Then location of substrate linked phosphorylation. Now that was two. Substrate level phosphorylation occurs where? Substrate level phosphorylation occurs in the glycolysis, in the cytoplasm and also in the Krebs cycle. So glycolysis and the Krebs cycle wherever ATP is made so substrate link phosphorylation takes place in glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. Link reaction, there's no ATP made in the link reaction. Now enters the Krebs cycle. What enters the Krebs cycle? That had to be 10. Acetyl group. The acetyl group enters 10. Carbon, uh, sorry, pyruvate becomes acetyl-CoA. So the acetyl group enters the Krebs cycle. Produced by oxidation of triose phosphate. Then coming to part B of the question, sometimes uh, the muscle cells of an athlete need to carry out respiration in anaerobic conditions. Explain why respiration of glucose in anaerobic conditions produces less ATP than in aerobic conditions. It's only 2 ATP in anaerobic conditions while it is 38 ATP in aerobic conditions. So basically why would that happen is because it's only glycolysis which is taking place. And that will only produce two molecules of ATP and there will be only be substrate link phosphorylation. Pyruvate is not uh, enters the mitochondria. It doesn't enter the mitochondria. So because oxygen is the pulling force. So the pyruvate is converted to lactate and lactate is still energy rich. And so oxygen is not available as a final electron acceptor. And the electron transport chain or you say the oxidative phosphorylation does not occur. Most ATP is produced in the electron transport chain where the NADH and the FADH, all that happens and all that is converted and the proton gradient and all that. So there is no additional substrate link phosphorylation in the Krebs cycle either. So basically what is happening is only glycolysis is taking place, but you have to give me what all is not taking place which used to produce more ATP. Why is it only that you're talking of two ATP as worse to aerobic respiration, we say 38 ATP. So where were the 36 produced, which is not being produced now? So please understand the question and then start answering it. Just uh, going through the mark scheme of this 8B, only glycolysis, conversion of glucose into pyruvate occurs, produces two molecules of ATP. That's all because the and, uh, AD in glycolysis, you spend two ATP and you get four ATP. So there's a net gain of two ATP. That is only substrate level phosphorylation or substrate linked phosphorylation. Pyruvate is converted to lactate. Why? Because the pyruvate cannot enter the mitochondria. Then lactate is still energy rich. So it's going to go back after you stop exercising. It's going to go back to the liver, convert to pyruvate. And then link reaction Krebs cycle and ETC will take place. Oxygen is not available as the final electron acceptor. Electron transport chain does not occur. 
Most ATP is produced in the electron transport chain and no additional substrate level phosphorylation occurs from the Krebs cycle because neither the Krebs cycle is going to take place. Question 9. The diversity of dung beetle species was investigated at two grassland sites in North America. Dung beetles feed on animal feces, dung. The first grassland site was grazed by cattle and the second grassland site was not grazed by cattle. The area of the two, so the area, that means the they were both the same area, length into breadth, were the same. At each grassland site, dung beetles were collected identified and counted. The results are shown in table 9.1. Dung beetle species A, number of dung beetles of grassland grazed by cattle 4267. Number of on grassland not grazed by any cattle were more. So 4267, 6, so this was be more. This is how I would read it to myself. B, uh, the B species were 2005 and 774, so this was less. Then the C species was again, this was less, they were 353 and now they are only 108. And then the D were 218 and they were 85, so this was less. Total was 6843, here the total was 7608, right? Now Simpson's index of diversity for the dung beetles on the grassland side grazed by cattle was calculated at 0 0.522 using the formula, whatever, D is equal to 1 minus sigma n over n square. And they've given you all the symbols. Calculate the Simpson's index of diversity of dung beetle on the grassland side that was not grazed by cattle. So you're going to be using this story here. Not grazed. Right? Complete table 9.2 to show your working. Write your answer, final answer to three decimal places. Oh, miss, we didn't read that. That's what your answer is when you do this in the exam. And I suppose we check your paper and you make a mistake and you say, oh, miss, I didn't know that. I didn't read it. So please do read it. Three decimal places on the dotted line. You can see I've uh, just done this for you. Please learn how to do the maths. N over N is the number over the whole. N is the total is the big N. And then, of course, you have to calculate the whole square of it. And then you have to add them all up. And you've got 0.772. And then, of course, it is you have to minus it from that. So that is the answer. Please look at it and see how we manage to do this the maths. Then coming on to the part two of the question, it says describe what the results in table 9.1 and both figures for Simpson's index of diversity show about the effect of grazing by cattle on the diversity of dung. So both table 9.1 and both figures for Sim Simpson's index of diversity. Now, as you look at the answer, the grace was 0 0.522. Now, you have a value between 0 and 1. So, 1 means greater and 0 means very low biodiversity and that is not very good. So, greater species evenness on grazed grasslands because it was 0 0.522. Grazing increases biodiversity. So, please understand this Simpson's index of biodiversity. Now, if you look at this, I'm just revising this with you all because I'm sure this question is going to come in the exam this year. Simpson's always a value between 1 and 0. Significance of high values of DIEM, close to 1. Diverse habitat, small change in habitat may only affect one species, habitat stable and can withstand change. But if the value is low, that is close to 0, 0 0.1, habitat dominated by just a few species, small changes in habitat may affect one of the key species and damage the whole habitat. So please just uh, pause the video here and have a look at this and understand it and learn the key words in which I am describing this to you. The last part of this question is the B part. Uh, other species of beetle that do not feed on animals dung are found, do not feed on animal dung are found on the grassland sites. Name and describe one method of estimating the population size of species of beetle that does not feed on dung in each of the two areas of the grassland. Now, basically, this was what? Whenever there is some sort of an animal that mobile animals, what do we do? It is the mark release recapture. Then you give me the details of it, you know, pitfall traps, where we're going to sort of uh, collect them. Then detail of the marking, where you use a felt pin or so that it wasn't toxic and it did not have any bad effects on it. Then release of the marked beetles, then the time of second trapping, it should not be very long, it should be very soon, a day or two after that, and then of the correct formula for the Lincoln's index. Just quickly going through this, the first mark was for mark release recapture. You see this is for four marks. 
So the name of it was important. Mark release recapture. This got you one mark. And then at the description would have got you just uh, any three marks. So you used a pitfall trap. I'm just going to show you a diagram of a pitfall trap. Now the pitfall trap is like a little thing that you sink into the ground and then you cover it up and then you allow the beetles to fall into it. And then of course you collect them a day or two later and then you count them. Then detail of the marking, you use a felt tip pin, pin, pen because you see you would mark them so that then you could actually count them later on. And then you release the marked beetles and then the time of the second trapping detail not too soon or let the mixing can occur so not long after as migration may occur. They might just leave that area. Then correct formula for the Lincoln's index, which is of course, you know the formula for the Lincoln's index if you gave that. But out of these five, any three were required because you had to get your four out of four. So one mark for this one. This one was the one mark. And then any out of these was any three out of these would get you that mark. See here, these are these three diagrams on the pitfall traps. And they just, you have to just dig in a small little, this thing into it, a little, uh, maybe, you know, an ice cream uh, plastic mug or some sort of a, just a thermopore plastic. And just, this is of course a tin has been used here. So you just cover it up so that the beetles don't run away because it's going to be hot there. So you just place this and then they will collect in it. And then of course you count them and count them for uh, count them all in one day, how many you collected. And then of course you mark them. You see the Lincoln's index formula as well here. It's N1, N is the total population is N1 into N2. N1 is the number of animals captured on the first day. And N2 is the number of animals recaptured on the second day. And then M is the number of marked animals recaptured. So in the second day, how many of those out of uh, maybe 200 or 300, how many of them were marked? So this is the Lincoln's index formula, N1 into N2 over M, the number of marked animals. Of course, you can use any formula, but basically it's the number counted on the first day, then the number into the number over the second day, and then of course divided by the ones that were marked in the second sample. Because the first sample you marked, these were the ones which you sent out which were marked. But then when you captured them the second time, how many of those were marked? Maybe just 10, maybe 20, maybe 30, maybe 40. So you have to figure that out. Now coming to the last question, question number 10, explain genetic role of protein production in a prokaryote using the LAC operon. Now this was the only long question which I can see in this uh, paper and this was the last question and that's for seven marks. So for seven marks, you could give me a whole lot of story and you can give me a lot of it so that you get your seven out of seven. I always say there's no negative marking and you can easily get full marks in this question if you just write a lot and you probably could manage the seven out of seven. Now I'm going to just discuss the mark scheme with you and revise it with you. Now, as you look at the mark scheme for this, it's a reference to regulatory gene. So this is a regulatory gene with a bacteria is placed in glucose, but it's not going to make the enzyme which it needs for lactose. But if you change, if you uh, put the bacteria into lactose, what happens? It codes for a repressor protein. Repressor protein binds to the operator, right? Now, in the presence of lactose, what happens? Lactose binds to the repressor protein. This changes shape, so it moves away from the operator. And then it covers part of the promoter. In, in absence of lactose, what happens? When there's no lactose, it covers the part of the promoter. RNA polymerase cannot bind to the promoter. You see, RNA polymerase always recognizes the promoter side. Structural genes cannot be transcribed. mRNA not synthesized. So if RNA polymerase cannot do its work, so mRNA cannot be synthesized. So if mRNA, not, no transcription, no translation, no protein made, which is required for the use of lactose. Enzymes, named enzymes cannot be synthesized. If you name them or if you just said enzymes cannot be synthesized, which are needed for the uptake of lactose. So basically any out of these, there are 10 mark scheme points and any. Now, of course, these are these ors which you need to also look into. If you, if you said converts, uh, covers part of promoter, if you said promoter region now unblocked, RNA polymerase can now bind to promoter, structural genes now transcribed, and enzymes can now be synthesized. So you can give me this or you can give me this. So this was the possible. So please revise the lac operon. This is the lac operon is it's also present in my videos on genetic, uh, on uh, inherited change, wherever this chapter is. And so please go through it and then revise it and then understand it. And then of course, learn how to word it, 
how the answer is going to be uh, worded when, if ever this question comes in the exam. And that finishes this uh, paper, pe specimen paper four, and best of luck and uh, all the very best. Thank you very much.